Good afternoon to our audience, and welcome to our August webinar. We have a fantastic webinar for you today. It's on marketing. In fact, the title is Marketing, Effective Use of Social Media. You'll love it. My name is Katherine Baxter. I'm your moderator for today, and I'm joined by Lauren Bethay. She's our host. Before I turn our consult over to Lauren, I want to refer you to this next slide, which will give you our administrative announcement. Okay? So we'd like you to adjust your computer volume so that you can hear this webinar very clearly. If you need to resize the slides, please drag the bottom right corner to do that. Also, from this site, you will need to allow pop-ups. At any time during the webinar, we would love for you to ask us a question. We have an all-star panel today for you. So please listen carefully for their name, and please address your question to the speaker. In fact, we'd like you to use questions throughout this webcast. We may ask some of the questions during the webcast, but we're going to save most of our questions for the end. Also, we have a post-webinar survey. We're going to push that out to you once we're done with the initial webcast. And, of course, as always, in approximately three weeks, we will close caption this webinar for on-demand viewing. As I mentioned, I'm joined today by Lauren Bethea, and Lauren is our host, and she is going to introduce our all-star cast. Lauren, we're waiting. Thank you so much, Catherine. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Bethea. I work as an economic development specialist in NCUA's Office of Small Credit Union Initiatives. I'm going to be hosting this training event for you today. But before we begin, I'm required to read to you the NCUA disclaimer. The training, this webinar is offered for informational and educational purposes only. NCUA does not endorse any particular credit union or vendor, their employees, products, or services. As Catherine mentioned, we'd like you to submit questions throughout the entire webinar. Please use the Ask a Question feature on the bottom left-hand corner of your console window. Also, for this webinar, we're offering a certificate of completion at the end. So you will be able to qualify for that certificate if you answer all three poll questions, if you correctly answer 12 out of the 15 quiz questions, and if you stay on the line for at least 45 minutes. So our topic today is marketing, why social media? Um, why this topic? Ask yourself, is social media the biggest revolution we've seen since the Industrial Revolution? I'll give you some surprising statistics to explain why we think it may be. Did you know it took radio 38 years to reach 50 million listeners? It took TV 13 years to reach 50 million people. It took the Internet four years to reach 50 million people. And it took Facebook less than a year to reach 200 million people. Can you believe it? So that's why we're presenting this topic today. So here's our agenda for today's webinar. We're going to talk to you about how to develop a social media plan, how to build your brand, how to define your target audience, how to determine what message to send to your audience, how to improve engagement with your target audience, and then we'll have a question and answer session in the end. Let me pause right here. Let's check with Catherine. Um, have we gotten any questions in from the audience yet? We don't have any that we are going to uh, submit yet, Lauren, but we'd like to encourage our audience to please listen carefully and give us your questions throughout the webinar. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce our webinar team for this presentation. Our first speaker is Chris Dukes. He's a summer intern who's been working in the Office of Small Credit Union Initiative. He worked with us on this project as well as a number of other projects. Chris, take a minute to say hello to everyone, please. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chris Dukes, a proud alumnus of Hampton University, where I earned my Bachelor of Science in Sports Management 
and is currently pursuing my Master of Science in Sports Administration. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Chris. Our next speaker is Kenzie Snowden. Kenzie works for the NCUA in the Office of Public and Congressional Affairs as a social media specialist. Kenzie, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Lauren. Um, as Lauren stated, um, my name is Kenzie Snowden, and I am the social media and outreach specialist here at NCUA. A lot of the uh, Facebook posts, imagery, YouTube videos, and tweets that you are sharing with your online community come from me. Um, I've been with the agency about five years, almost six in January, believe it or not, um, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Kenzie. Our next speaker is Ken Bader. Ken's company is Bader Training and Consulting. Ken, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, please. Thank you, Lauren. It's, it's great to be here today. Uh, I've been working with, with credit unions in one way, shape, or form since 1993. I uh, would love to say that I started when I was 10 years old, but that's not the case. Uh, I started Bader Trading and Consulting about 15 years ago, working with credit unions and other service organizations. And recently, the author of the book, The Formula for Business Success Equals B Plus C Plus S, which is, which is a discussion for the need of brand, culture, and strategy alignment. Thank you, Ken. Our last speaker for this webinar session is Jeff Snyder. Jeff is the Communications Officer with the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Jeff, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name, as Lauren said, is Jeff Snyder, and I am the uh, Communications Officer for the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. My duties at the PCUA largely include acting as the writer and editor of our daily newsletter, Life is a Highway, and overseeing our social media accounts, among other things. <clears throat> The PCUA is a trade association based out of Harrisburg that provides legislative, promotional, and operational support for our member credit unions. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. We're going to talk about some social media common terms. In some respects, social media has a language all its own. Let's talk about some of those terms. Many of you may be familiar with the term going viral. What does that mean? So that means there's an image, video, or advertisement that is circulated rapidly over the Internet from one person to the next. Tweet. What is a tweet? And I know I don't mean birds chirping. A tweet is a message posted on Twitter which may include text, photos, or videos. Okay. The next term we're going to talk about is hashtag. What is that? So a hashtag is a symbol used within a message to identify a keyword or topic of interest. Retweet means to share or forward someone else's message via Twitter. The last definition we're going to talk about is blog. What is a blog? So it's a website containing a writer's experiences, observations, opinions, and has images and links uh, to other websites. Okay, I'm going to turn the next slide over to Chris again. Chris is going to talk about some social media facts. Thanks, Lauren. Today I have some cool fast facts for you. My first fast fact for you is that did you know that over 70% of the web audience uses Facebook? Quite interesting. And also that 96% of millennials have joined a social networking. Thanks, Lauren. Back to you. Wow. Thanks a lot, Chris, for sharing those facts. Okay, we've got our first poll question. Let's see who's on the line. So our question is, what is your credit union's asset size? If you're a credit union that's less than 10 million, uh, make the first selection in the first dial, radio dial, um, and so on. If you're not a credit union participating in the webinar, select NA, please. So Lauren, we've had some questions from our audience about how to print the slides. There is a green icon at the bottom of your screen. The slides are there. If you can't see the slides there, do F5 on your computer so you can refresh and you should see the slides there and that's where you can print them. Okay, thank you for that, Catherine. Okay, let's see what our poll results are. 
Okay, so our largest concentration is with credit unions that are between 10 and 50 million in assets. We've got 26.9% in that category. Our second category is over 250 million, 21.7% or over 250 million. Wow. Okay, so we're going to turn it to our first speaker, Kenzie Snowden. Go ahead, Kenzie, tell the audience a little more about yourself and then jump right into your presentation, please. Sure thing. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kenzie Snowden. As I stated before, I'm the social media and outreach specialist here at NCUA. Despite the baby face, I've been in the government for about 13 years now. Um, I've spent five, almost six, uh, with NCUA. Prior to joining um, NCUA, I worked at the United States Patent and Trademark Office, where the bulk of my responsibility was social media, establishing the program and managing it. I have a bachelor's in communications with a concentration in journalism. All right, now enough about me. Today I will be sharing some tips on how to create a social media strategy that works. Um, setting um, the foundation for success on social media means creating a solid strategy to work from. The hard part is knowing where to start. So let's dive in. We have much to cover. In this presentation, we will briefly talk about why social media should be a part of your credit union's overall marketing strategy. We will define what a social media marketing plan actually is. We will discuss key parts of a social media marketing plan, explore how to evaluate the effectiveness of your plan, and what tools are available to help you track your progress. Social media is one of the most powerful tools in your marketing arsenal. If you use it correctly, you can reinforce a strong personal connection with new and existing members. But to reap this benefit, you need to build a clear social strategy. That strategy should account for what you're trying to achieve, who your audience is, and how you define success. Your social media marketing plan should summarize everything you plan to do and hope to achieve for your credit union using social media. The more specific your plan, the more effective you'll be in this implementation. Try and keep your social media marketing plan as concise as possible. This plan should guide your actions, but it will also be a measure by which you determine whether you're succeeding or failing at your social media efforts. So, key parts of your social media marketing plan include an inventory of your current social media use and how it's working for your credit union, what you would like to achieve, how content will be created, how you will measure success, and how you will engage with your online community. Prior to creating your social media marketing plan, you will need to evaluate who is currently connecting to your social account which social media sites your audience uses, and how your social media presence compares to your competitors. Once you've conducted your audit, you should have a clear picture of every social media account representing your credit union and what purpose they serve. This living inventory should be maintained regularly, especially as you grow your program. Goal setting is a staple of all marketing and business strategies. Social media is no exception. The first step in creating a social media marketing plan is to understand where you want to go. So set some goals. But keep in mind, these goals should be aligned with your credit union's broader marketing strategy so that your social media efforts all drive towards your credit union's business objectives. Remember, when determining your goals and objectives, use the SMART approach, meaning they should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time sensitive. Without great content, social media is meaningless. So when deciding what type of content to post, consider how you will present this information. You should also consider what time you will post this content. There are many studies floating out there that discuss when you should post on social media. 
However, I suggest using these studies as guidelines rather than hard rules. Remember, your audience is unique, so you need to test and figure out the best time for yourself. And take advantage of free tools like Google Analytics and Social Media Insights to see when your fans are online and engaging with your content. In addition to defining the type of content, time, and frequency of posting, your content strategy should also answer the following questions. Is the content you're developing aimed at current or new members? Are you going to have one person designated to crafting content, or will this be a shared duty? And how will you promote the content? Will it appear on all your social sites or just your Facebook page? There are a million things you can track related to social media. So start by looking at how much traffic is being driven to your website. Keep in mind, uh, keep an eye on your social posts so to see what your community is responding to and look for trends related to particular topics or keywords that generate more interest than others. Google Analytics can be really helpful in tracking this information. Here's an example of what you will see in a Google Analytics dashboard. As you can see from this representation, you can pull a variety of information, like the number of visitors to your site, the time spent on your site, how they found your site, meaning did they come through social or search engine, and you can see how many people viewed your site on mobile, um, mobile devices, and you can even compare it to those who view it on the desktop. Most social media dashboards can help you track the number of people clicking through to your website. For example, Sprout Social, which is one of my favorite dashboards, allows you to compose your social posts, shorten your links, and track the performance all from within the platform. You should also have a plan in place to help you stay on top of updates and engage with your community. I'm a big believer in automated updates. Social media dashboards can help you create and schedule posts to be sent out at any time or date that you choose. There are a number of free and paid tools available to help you stay up to speed on who is talking about your credit union. Begin with the ones listed here and you'll be able to listen as well as stay on top of your brand management. Keep in mind, none of the tools are all-inclusive. They catch bits and pieces of what is out there, but don't always get it all. Now that you have an idea of the types of social media tools available to you, we can now discuss what you should be monitoring. Here's what I recommend. A few variations of your credit union name include abbreviations and key staffers or leadership your credit union slogans, key messages or mottos, and alternative spellings or misspellings of your credit union name. If you have a unique name, this is even more important because chances are people will forget how to spell your name and typos do occur. Also search for keywords or items that are, relate, that are relevant to your industry. Here are some of the key terms I have set up to help track what is being said about NCUA, our leadership, and services. Social media requires engagement too. When people talk to you, talk back. Make sure you set aside time during your day to follow up with these conversations that are happening. They're too important to ignore. Before I close, I would like to note that your social media plan should be constantly changing. As your credit union grows, you might need to add new roles or grow your social presence for different branches or services. Don't be afraid to rewrite your strategy to reflect your latest insights, but make sure your leadership is aware of what has been updated. Thank you, and if you have questions, send them in, or you can contact me directly. And also, be sure to connect with NCUA on social as well. Thanks. Back to you, Lauren. Thank you so much, Kenzie. Nice job. But we've got a question in for you already. We're going to go to a question. Oh, okay. In fact, we can do the poll and ask her, Kenzie the question. How about that? Okay. All right. So let's go to poll number two. What social media platform is your credit union using? 
And so the choices that we selected were Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, there may be another one, or none at all. So take a few minutes to answer the poll question. You may uh, select more than one answer as well for this question. Okay. So, Kenzie, are you ready for your first question? I am. Okay. So we have a credit union that wanted to know, would you please tell them what the name of your favorite site is? She said, is something social? Oh, Sprout Social. I'm like, favorite <laughs> site? Are you saying social site? Um, my favorite dashboard is Sprout Social. Um, that's just my preference. Before I um, used Sprout Social, I was using Hootsuite. Um, they all pretty much do the same thing. It's just about what you're comfortable with. I'm just more com- comfortable and drawn to Sprout Social. <laughs> Thank you, Kenzie. You're welcome. welcome. On to you, Lauren. Okay. Let's see what the results of our poll question is. Wow. So 75.5% of you are using Facebook. Wow. The second uh, platform being used is Twitter at 44.2%. That's great. Thank you so much for responding to that poll question. We're going to throw it to Chris. Chris has some more fast facts for you. Hey, Lauren. I'm back with another fast fact. Here's another mind-blowing fact for you. There are over 206.2 million Internet users in the United States. That means 71.2% of the United States is a web audience. Interesting. Back to you. Wow. Thanks, Chris. Okay. So we're going to move to our next speaker. That's Ken Bader. Ken, uh, give a little more background about yourself and then jump right into your presentation, please. Sure, sure, not a problem. Thank you again for for having me today. Um, Probably the the best fact about me, given the audience, is uh, through my firm, Bader Training and Consulting, we uh, we founded, and I'm the manager of the Police Officers Credit Union Association. Uh, And most of our credit unions in that group are under 100 million in assets. And I believe from the earlier poll, uh, about 40 to 50 percent of our audience are executives or, or employees of credit unions under 100 million. So, I, I certainly understand some of the challenges that that smaller credit unions have, especially credit unions that that are under 100 million and, and have a few that are my clients right now. But uh, want to mention Kenzie. Uh, in particular because she made so many great points. Uh, The one in particular that I love more than any of of those excellent points is the fact that she talked about building a social media plan. Uh, Having done dozens, probably even hundreds of strategic planning sessions for credit unions, uh, more than I'd I'd actually like to mention, planning is is very important to me, but especially for those small credit unions out there, and I I shouldn't say small, for for those credit unions under $100 because even though you may be small in assets by definition, you you certainly don't have to have a small brand, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but you know, it, having a plan is important, and it's also important to remember that when it comes to social media planning, it doesn't have to be just one more thing on your plate. The, the social media plan should be part of an overall marketing plan. That marketing plan should be part of the overall strategic plan. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, being my foundation is brand culture and strategy alignment, that that strategic plan needs to obviously align with the image that you're promoting as well as the experience that you have at at your credit union. But one of the first things I want to mention is that from a branding standpoint, because I'm going to take more of an airplane view and, and try to drill it down a little bit. From a branding standpoint, you know, we have to remember that, that it's about telling our story. Um, the unfortunate thing is, regardless of how many dollars we spend on marketing or traditional advertising or direct mail um, or things of that nature, that, that people just don't trust marketing <laughs> as much as they used to. Uh, but they do trust other people, which we'll get into, and they do want to hear your unique story. Um, the other thing that we need to keep in mind is, is the fact that, that it's not a quick fix. You know, it's, we're all looking for a, a silver bullet, a uh, golden ring, something that's going to make everything better. 
Uh, unfortunately, social media isn't that case. You know, in fact, it, as, as Kenzie alluded to, it, it needs to be part of your overall marketing plan. We need to know exactly how to fit that tactic into our overall marketing mix. But just as important, and I know that Jeff's going to talk about tone, which is really important in his next presentation, is that, that social media really doesn't fix anything. If, if you have an inconsistent, a poor brand message, all that's going to end up doing by going onto social media is exposing that inaccurate or maybe poor message to even more people, which is the last thing you want to do. The good news, of course, is, is if you truly do have a great brand message, social media is an excellent tool and, and very economical to get that story out there. But we need to understand our brand first. So if we're like this guy and internally you know, we think that you know, we're a suit and tie type of person and, and we're all buttoned up, but if our members, our prospective members, and God forbid our employees you know, think that we have an image more like Bozo here, you know, then, then we have a real problem on our hands. So we need to take care of that first before we go into social media. But as I mentioned, if, if we have a great culture, if we have a great brand message, social media is the perfect tactic to, to take our message out there. You know, I look at this post on Facebook from Financial Edge Credit Union, and it's the employees, and they look like they're having fun, and they're giving away free donuts. You know, they're not trying to sell anything. It looks like a place that I want to do my banking at, and I also, if I'm an employee, a prospective employee, a place that I probably want to work. So this is a, a great reflection of this particular institution's brand message. Tip number two of, of five tips that I'm going to share with you today is, is be clear about that message. As I already said, an, an ineffective message to even more people is a bad idea. You know, we need to, to tell our unique story and, and go past the traditional unique selling proposition, your USP. Uh, a lot of times in marketing we want to talk about the specific value of a product or the specific benefit of doing business with our credit union. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's perfectly fine. But branding and social media specifically is about telling our unique story. Uh, much like this slide over here, you know, we, this Felicity Guerin is talking about you know, how great it is to work with Credit Union for Kids. You know, that's perfect for not only our branding, but also in the message of social media because it, it brings people together and it, it gives some insight into how uniquely we are. You know, one very important point and some good news because we're always thinking about you know, whether we're a $25 million credit union or a $250 million credit union, you know, what resources we don't have, you know, the things that we can't do because we only have so much staff and, and time. But the fact is, is that credit unions and social media really, really can be a, a great marriage because we all have, as credit unions, a really unique story. And I know we do. Having worked with credit unions since 93, you can go to just about any credit union's website and go to the About Us page, and it will talk about you know, four people that walked up the mountain in the snow both ways with $8 in their pockets because they felt that it was necessary and they were compelled to start a credit union. Yeah, these, these are stories that we can begin to leverage uh, both in our general marketing as well as on social media. And, you know, one of the things that, that I'll get into is the culture and getting employees involved later on. I just read a, a great white paper from Sherry Nassim yesterday, and she talked about getting your employees involved in the evolving story of your organization. Uh, I think that getting your members involved through social media of your evolving story of your credit union is, is a great approach and a great mindset to have when, when going down the, the social media road. But yeah, again, yeah, the brand is, is no longer what we tell people it is. It's what we tell, or excuse me, what customers tell each other it is. You know, the fact is, is that people will actually trust strangers more so than the credit union itself and what they're touting in terms of how great they are via advertising. It just happens to be the, the world that we live in. 
And I want to give you a couple of examples. This is one of my favorite credit unions. I live in the Los Angeles area right now, but uh, born and raised and, and lived in the Chicagoland area for years and years and years. And this is a credit union I was personally a member of when I lived in Chicago, DuPage Credit Union. Great community credit union, I want to say, I haven't looked up their assets, I want to say they're probably about a half a billion. But, but this is a quality post. You know, it's, it's educational. Um, it's, it's got a woman smiling. It's, it's showing uh, somebody working on their first home without being too pushy in a salesy way. But one of the things I like the most about this particular slide is the fact that they've got reviews. They've got a 4.3 star rating out of 5, which is good. Anything over 4 is going to be a solid rating. But what that says to people that are, are checking out DuPage Credit Union, wondering if they want to do business there, are saying, oh, okay, there's, there's a few reviews. I'd like to see more than 14, of course. But there's a good sampling, at least, of the people that are responding on social media saying that, you know what, hey, this is a good place to bank. So look for those reviews and find ways to, to build that. Tip number three of five, as I alluded to, is sell through education. You know, today, people don't like to be sold. You know, remember that, that social is the first word in social media. Um, if we were in an in-person networking event, if we were at a community softball game or at a uh, community or a sponsor picnic, you know, we wouldn't go up to somebody we met for the first time and say, hi, I work for XYZ Credit Union. I do home equity loans. Can I sign you up for a home equity loan today? You know, no, we, we don't do that. <laughs> so, so certainly don't do that via social media. Be educational. It, it plays to our strengths as credit unions anyway. We're, we're always trying to do seminars for our members. We brought in balance uh, to help our members with, with credit issues. So use the social media to sell through our education and our expertise. As Howard Schultz here says, it's one of the biggest mistakes we do with these channels is we try to sell stuff um, rather than be social and, and be able to educate. This is a former client of mine, Maine State Credit Union. They're the, the largest credit union in the state of Maine. And, and this is a, an okay post. I like the fact that they're educational. They're, they're not selling anything. Um, it's a video, and video is very popular today via social media. Um, it's also an outside source. It isn't, it's not coming directly from them. They didn't film the video with their credit union. But, you know, in essence, it's, it's kind of boring. If I remember that, I, I remember I think it's like a 15-minute video. Um, you know, nobody's going to really watch it that long unless it's really funny and entertaining. It's certainly better than nothing. I would rather they do that than, than nothing because it's educational. But, you know, maybe we can do a little bit better. You know, here's an example from another one of my clients, Omaha Police Federal Credit Union. They're about $65 million, so they're right in the range of, of much of the audience. And this is a very simple but effective post. You know, four common credit card questions you haven't asked. It's, it's educational. There's, there's only four common questions. So people say, all right, you know, I could probably go through four tips or, or four questions. If it said 18 tips you want to know about credit cards, people probably wouldn't be as apt to, to go ahead and, and click on that. Great example here from a credit union not too far away from, from me in Burbank, California, UMI Credit Union. This is an example of a credit union that grew from 120 million to 180 million in the last five years. Now they did that with a lot of different branding, but I love their approach on social media. I actually had a chance to interview Robert Einstein, the CEO, a couple weeks ago. Um, and one of the things that he mentioned is they never sell on social media. They, they're educational, they're fun, they're quirky, much like their brand, but they never sell on social media. I don't quite agree with that. I think that there's a little bit of selling that you can do, but I like the sentiment and I like the approach. This is their Twitter page, and the one thing that I really, really like above all else on here is that last post where it says seven ways to save on, perfect on the perfect engagement ring. Now, if you're a member and you're thinking about getting married and you want to save some money on an engagement ring, that's going to be a real valuable post. 
And who, you, who do you think they're going to think about financing that ring with more than anybody else, especially if they are a member of you, me? You know, great post. And you know, we, again, you know, as I mentioned, we need to engage and get our members involved. This is Desert Valley, is another client of mine. They're about 32 million in assets. And they're a great example of you don't have to be large in order to build a brand, especially if you're doing things right, right on social media. I mean, yeah, how great is this? You know, a member hugging her car, her new car that Desert Valley has helped them to, to finance. Yeah, not, not only is it not selling anything, but it creates a, a great emotion and also ties in perfectly to the brand and, and who they are at, at Desert Valleys. If, if I lived in, in this area, I'd want to be a member of, of Desert Valleys. Tip four of, of five is, is start small. Um, you know, there are a number of organizations, whether they're credit unions or small businesses that I see, you know, think that social media is going to be that quick fix. So, so they start a Facebook page, and they start uh, a Twitter page, and they go to Google+, and then they're on Instagram and LinkedIn and, and, and God knows what else. And, and that's fine if you truly have the resources to do it. But, you know, start with one. I, I was glad to see that most people here are on Facebook. Uh, if you're only going to be on one social media site, that's probably the site to be on. Um, not only because it's the it's the largest site, uh, but also you can boost some po some uh, some posts, which is is fairly inexpensive. Um, but I would rather have you start with one social media site and be very diligent about posting consistently and in the proper way than to be on so many different sites and, and do it haphazardly. That not only will not work. Uh, but it will create a lot of frustration for you and won't be good for your brand. Tip, uh, again, on tip four, you know, the nice thing about social media is from a hard cost standpoint, it literally can be zero. Uh, Kenzie mentioned a couple of schedulers. Uh, I believe the basic packages for Hootsuite and Buffer are free. Um, usually you want a little bit more functionality. Those are like about $10 a month. Um, you can also go to Edgar, which is a program that I've learned about that I'm, uh, I kind of like, but that's about 45 bucks a month. Uh, but you can certainly do this yourself. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a huge cost. Um, as I mentioned on Facebook, you can even boost a post for $5 or $10, which is not highly expensive. Um, here's another example from Desert Valleys here. Uh, they did a, uh, a, a put together a, uh, an ad contest with their, with their children's members. Uh, and yeah, this didn't cost them anything but some time, but it was effective because it got the, the members' kids involved and it was fun to, to look at on, on Facebook uh, every other day. Um, so we, we don't necessarily have to spend a ton of hard money, but we do have to remember we do have to spend some time. Um, you know, we, we do have to be consistent about posting and, and posting the right things. So tip number 505 is involve everybody. You know, I mentioned the importance of the brand and the importance of the strategy. You know, this is also an opportunity to, to build your culture, to, to get people involved. Uh, odds are if you have some millennials that are, are working in your branch, you know, they know more about these social media sites than, than you do as a CEO or, or CFO. Uh, and frankly, who better to market to millennials than, than a fellow uh, millennial? You, know, you, you do have to have some rules in place, of course, um, but it's a real opportunity to not only engage your members, but to engage your employees. I mean, look at this post. I mean, all these folks look very, very happy to be working there and, and have a good time. It's a, uh, it's a message that you definitely want to send. So some key takeaways. Yeah, number one, develop your unique story. You know, find out exactly why you're different. Yeah, people can go and bank anywhere, but they want to have an experience, and that starts with, with creating a unique story. Uh, find the best marketing mix that's going to promote your brand, and then bring in social media if you haven't already. 
Um, determine the best sites for your credit union. Odds are it's probably Facebook and then Twitter. Uh, but again, if you're going to use only one, uh, that's probably a good idea to start with Facebook. Uh, be social. Um, you know, try not to, to sell an 8.9% visa um, every other day on Facebook. Be, be social. Be engaging. Be educational. And engage all of your stakeholders, not just your members, but, but also get your employees involved. And the bonus tip, the last tip, is, is to have some fun. Uh, I've heard from more than, than one credit union client lately that running a credit union is a lot harder and not as much fun <laughs> as it was you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago. But you know, remember to, to have fun and, and have fun with your brand and, and learn to have some fun with social media because that's, that's part of the platform itself. Um, here's my contact information. Be more than happy to answer any questions after the program. Uh, I believe that there is a white paper that I offer on brand culture strategy alignment that's been approved by the NCUA to share. Um, also happy to share the Robert Einstein interview with you from you, me, Credit Union. Simply uh, shout out to me, and I'm, I'll be more than happy to take care of that. Thank you, Ken. You provided a lot of good information, a lot of good pointers. Um, I do want to mention to our audience we have a resource widget, which is green, on the bottom of your screen in which you can find Ken's white paper that he mentioned. Um, and then there's another reference in that uh, widget under resources that may be beneficial to our credit unions today. Um, before we move on to our next slide, we want to uh, present one of the questions that have come in to you, Ken. So. Catherine's going to read the question, and um, so Ken, you um, actually got um, a couple of questions on the same thing. You mentioned paying to boost a post, so we have a few credit unions mm -hmm. that want you to explain that. Certainly, uh, if you're posting on Facebook. You can post a story or post a picture or something along those lines. On the bottom of that post, after you've posted it, there's a little button that says, uh, if I remember it correctly, boost post or boost this post. And when you click on that, it gives you some parameters of, of how to, to share that particular post to more people. Um, it gives you the, the options of age ranges, um, I believe proximity to, to your location, um, and you could, post it, you could boost it for $5 or $20 or for a day or for seven days. Um, the reason that that's important, other than the fact that it's a fairly inexpensive way to, to, to market, um, is that Facebook has become a very much uh, pay-to-play site. Um, if, you, if you just post all the time blindly without boosting, it's not going to get as, as much uh, of an audience. But if you, every once in a while, you, in essence, pay Facebook a little bit to boost a post, you know, not only will they boost that specific post that's, that may be important to your membership and prospective membership, but also they, they learn through their algorithms that you, know, you are boosting posts from time to time, and that will, in essence, give some of your other posts some, some larger play. Fantastic. So on to you, Lauren. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. We are going to uh, let Chris present some more of our social media facts. Um, our next slide. Go ahead, Chris, with those facts. Thanks, Lauren. Some more good facts for you. LinkedIn has an average of 12 million visitors per day. Twitter has an average of 310 million monthly active users tweeting away. And believe it or not, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. And check this one out. 48% of 18 to 34-year-olds check Facebook first thing in the morning. Back to you, Lauren. Wow. Thanks, Chris. That's amazing. Okay. We're going to turn to our next poll question. And that question is, wait for the slide to come up. What percentage of your membership accesses your credit union's network using their smartphone? 0 to 25%, 26 to 50%, 51 to 75%, 76 to 100 percent, or your answer may be unknown. Let's take a few minutes to answer this question. Oops. 
think they should be ready now. Okay. So the largest category, unfortunately, is unknown. 39.3% of you said you don't know what percentage of your membership is using their smartphone. Uh, the next category is 0 to 25% at 22.7% of you. Thank you. Okay, do we have any more quick questions that we can present to our speakers, Catherine, before we go to our next speaker? We do. Um, so I think we're going to give Ken another one. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. So, Ken, a credit union wants to know, what are some ways to engage your employees for social media initiatives? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I would I would say number one, um, you know, find people that aspire to to leadership. You know, whether it's a teller that wants to be a teller supervisor or a a loan expert that that wants to be a CEO someday. Uh, I would start there, number one, and, and try to engage them and get them involved because this is a, a leadership opportunity. Um, the other way, and, and this is probably a, a more important way where you can get everybody involved, is, is simply at the staff meeting explain what you're trying to do from both a marketing and a branding uh, perspective and, and ask for, for their particular ideas. Uh, I'll give you a real-world example. One of my clients in, in Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio Police Federal Credit Union, shared uh, some of the things they were trying to do with marketing and asked for suggestions of the staff. And they had a, a great recommendation uh, on a campaign that, that could be transferred to social media where they could have gnomes around the city. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a longer drawn out uh, idea than that, but uh, it's an excellent idea. And it was something fun that would fit in well with social media and something, frankly, that the executive staff probably wouldn't have thought of on their own, uh, just simply because they're, they're dealing with other things. So when you get uh, employees involved by simply asking. You know, it doesn't need to be complex. Simply asking from the perspective of what you're trying to accomplish, you, you, you may get some, some really, really good ideas. Okay. Thank you, Ken. All right. We're going to move to our last speaker for today, Jeff Snyder, again from the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Jeff, again, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then jump right into your presentation, please. Of course, thank you. Um, hello again, everyone. I guess just a few more details on myself before we get started. My my background is largely in writing and broadcast media. So prior to joining the PCUA, I earned a, an English degree from the York College of Pennsylvania and worked as an editor for an academic publishing company. I also have nearly over half a decade in broadcast media for a variety of outlets from sports journalism to public access and news. Currently, I also act as the associate editor and writer for 32 Flags, which is an, an international soccer news website. So, uh, earlier, Kenzie gave us some great information on the nitty-gritty how-tos of designing your social media plan, while Ken educates us on some really valuable tips on growing your credit union's brand on social media. Building off of those, we're now going to look at the tone of your plan, as well as some important do's and don'ts to remember while you're developing a social media plan for your credit union. Developing a social media plan that has a clear and established tone is an important factor in ensuring that your social media efforts are as successful and stress-free as possible. So let's dive right in. The first step to establishing a social media plan is to define your tone. This is an important step because it becomes the foundation of the rest of your social media efforts, the seeds of your plan. First, you're going to have to ask yourself three questions. The first two are important because they inform the answer of your third. These questions are, who do you want to be? What do you want your credit union to be to its members? And if you defined your social media policy in three words, what would they be? 
These three words are the most significant three words in your social media plan because they are the tone of your plan. The tone is the overall feel of your social media efforts. For example, the association, the PCUA, chose energetic, approachable, and respectful. You can see these words reflected in the posts that we make. Everything we do fits within the guidelines of these three words. This is the first step to building a well-thought-out social media plan. Another important tip is to make sure that you maintain a positive tone. Regardless of what other characteristics you chose to define your tone, remember that positivity is key to your social media efforts. Positivity creates an enjoyable atmosphere, which goes further to drive engagement. If you're positive and appear to enjoy engaging with your followers, those followers will want to return to your account because they're going to enjoy interacting with you. Positivity also protects against poor reactions. It's difficult to give a negative or angry response when you're being positive and happy. Positivity is your shield against the dreaded social media gaffe. In fact, positivity can have the opposite effect of a gaffe. If you go above and beyond to aid a viewer or react well to a complaint, the response will be remembered, and not just by those you directly reacted to, but to anyone who happened to see it. So, once you've established your tone, you need to decide how often you'll be able to post. Posting, uh, your posting activity is as important a factor in engagement as positivity. One of the reasons posting frequency is so important is because the social media world moves fast, rendering an inactive account a dead one. An infrequently posted to account also gives off the impression of obligation. You're, in other words, only posting because you feel you have to. This attitude then goes and bleeds into your content, which drives users away. On the other hand, an active account shows an interest and engagement that you really care about reaching out to your members. Frequent posts have the added benefit of giving followers both a reason to come back to your account page and a reason to subscribe to your account which makes it easier for them to directly receive your updates. Remember, frequent quality posts are really important to growth. And the keyword there is quality. Repetitive, boring posts will drive your readers away. And that is why it's important to post with a purpose. Make sure there's a good reason to make that post. And don't just post because you feel that you should, that you should get something up that day, in other words. So, remember earlier when I said how important tone was? That's because your content should align closely with your tone. The quality of your posts was also important, and that's because that is driven by tone and content matching harmoniously. So, from your tone, you'll decide what kind of posts you should make. Together, tone and content creates your message. Some types of posts your account could specialize would be anything from local news to original content to funny pictures or memes or even insightful financial tips. Any of these are fine within reason as long as the content reflects the tone and vice versa. A very professional, high-minded account shouldn't be posting goofy pictures while a more local-focused account shouldn't be posting unrelated national news that their members won't necessarily care about. It's essential that your posts match your established tone or else they'll seem strange and out of place. The next tip is more so something you should do to give yourself the best chance of maximizing success of your social media efforts. And that is, take time out of your week to plan your social media posts. Weekly planning allows for well thought out but topical posts. As well as opposed, uh, as opposed to monthly plans. In the long run, giving yourself the opportunity to plan out your week will save you time and stress. And as mentioned earlier, scheduling your posts also allows you to send out 
your posts at the best time for your viewers. The time that you take to plan does not need to be anything significant either. It can be anywhere from three hours every Monday, for example, or 30 minutes every day. Ultimately, it comes down to your needs and what your schedule can allow. Many of us will not be doing social media exclusively, so it does have to fit into the rest of what we do. So, one of the advantages of having an extended planning session each week is that everything is planned out and scheduled for the week. One of the downsides, however, is it can be less flexible and less in the moment. An advantage to the previously mentioned 30 minutes every day, so shorter sessions, is that you can post more up-to-date material or topical material. But this can be stressful depending on your schedule. You may not even be able to post one day because you simply ran out of time. I know it's happened to me, so the best method I have found is a mix of both. So you want to have certain more important things scheduled to go out that week, but you want to give yourself some time every day to post things that are quick and topical as your schedule allows. Above all else, remember to be yourself. Don't be afraid to show your personality while following your tone. Be positive, happy, and very importantly, don't be boring. Nothing turns off viewers on a social media quicker than being insulting or boring. Also, it's important to remember that social media is a tool, not a gimmick. You can easily find examples of businesses that have used this platform flippantly and have been burned in the past for it. Take it seriously because mistakes can take a very long time to fix. You should have fun, but also don't forget why your account exists and that is to help you to connect to your members. While establishing a plan and following it can be good for your, important, uh, your efforts, also don't become too rigid with it. Your plan is a good fallback protection to help you in the fast-paced world of social media, but make sure that it doesn't limit you. As with anything on the Internet, there are no hard set rules, so make sure that you're flexible and consistently learning as you go on. So don't be afraid to experiment. Find out what works for you, your credit union, your members, and your account. Because they're going to be different for everybody. Social media is an exciting new frontier that is constantly evolving. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where we all take it in the future. If you have any further questions for me, please feel free to contact me in any of the following ways that you see on your screen now, and I'll be happy to answer them for you, as well as in our answer session later on. Thank you all very much for tuning in today. Thanks a lot, Jeff. You provided a lot of good information for our audience. Okay, we've got some more facts, social media facts, that Chris is going to present to us. Go ahead, Chris. Here's another fast fact for you. Now, remember earlier in the presentation, we mentioned what a blog was. But just in case you forgot, I'll reiterate it. A blog is a website containing a writer's own experience, observation, and opinion. Now let's dive into some facts. There are over 200 million blogs. 34% of bloggers post opinions about products and brands. 78% of consumers trust peer recommendations. Now you may ask, why is this important to credit unions? If your consumer has a positive customer service experience, the word of mouth given from social media platforms can offer your business greater opportunities and enhance your brand. Thanks, Lauren. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Chris. Okay, Jeff, we've got a question that we're going to um, present to you. Catherine's going to read it. All right, Jeff. This is a very good question that we have here for you. Are you ready? Of course. Okay. So here's what the credit union said. Uh, what is a good rule of thumb for posting frequency? Uh, and they emphasize a good quality post on Facebook versus Twitter. You know, uh, with Facebook, you're going to be anywhere from three to five posts a day. I mean, uh, sorry, not a day, a week. Uh, and that's largely because you can have longer posts on, on Facebook. Now, with Twitter, that's a bit more, it's called microblogging. So it's going to be shorter posts. So I would advise probably about one post a day, and really more than that will work. Uh, really, the only thing you have to worry about is too often. So depending on your situation, uh, Twitter, you don't want to post more than, we'll say, 
10 unless there's a specific event that you're what would be called live blogging or reporting from. And with Facebook, uh, probably about five posts a day might be a, a bit much. Okay, sounds good, Lauren. Okay. So in conclusion, let's talk about some of the social media key takeaways. So let me advance the slides. Sorry. Okay. So develop a social media plan in advance. Remember, content is king. Know your brand, build your brand, and stay true to your brand. Social media isn't a fad, but a fundamental shift in the way we communicate as a society. So our speakers provided a lot of good ideas about how to begin using social media to market credit unions if you're not already using social media. And for those of you who are, are using social media, they provided a lot of good tips to enhance your social media marketing. Okay, so we've got some final concluding thoughts. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can obtain a certificate of completion by answering all three of the poll questions and getting 12 out of the 15 quiz questions correct. Um, I want to share with you our upcoming webinars, our schedule for the rest of 2016. So September 21st, we're going to have a topic, High Impact Community Partnerships. October 12th, Financial Literacy. November 9th, Loan Underwriting, Back to Basics. And December 7th, Vendor Management and Due Diligence are our topics for the remainder of this year. This next page is just the contact information for the Office of Small Credit Unions. Feel free to send us an email or even call us if you need to. I'm going to turn it over to Catherine. Um, we're going to start our question and answer session now. Okay, thank you, Lauren. So um, let's just reiterate, for those that want to receive a certificate, you need to have answered two out of the three poll questions, all three of them, sorry, all three poll questions. You also need to stay on, have been on this call for 45 minutes. And to receive a certificate, after you take the quiz, you'll need to answer correctly 12 out of 15 questions. We will keep the console open so that you can take the test. When you want to print your um, certificate, one of the magenta icons at the bottom of your screen will show you your progress. You'll see, if you've done everything that I mentioned, you'll see three green lights. And that green light means that you've completed them. Um, the test is on the magenta one to the right. And the one to its left is the one where you'll be able to see how far you've progressed. So it's the one on the left that will have the certificate at the bottom. It's a little icon within the icon. Once you have all three green lights, you can click on that icon and print your certificate. Okay? So without further ado, let's warm up our speakers. I'm going to ask a general question. This is a pretty good question I think that we have. So um, a credit union says, let's start with Kenzie. Kenzie's been waiting for a while, so we <laughs> want to keep her honest. So credit union says that if they are doing something for the community or a local charity, is it okay to share that on Facebook? Absolutely, yes. That is great content for particularly your Facebook page. Facebook is a little bit softer. Um, it's more of a, you know, catch up with friends, family type of site, and that type of content would be great for your audience because it shows a softer side of your um, of your credit union. You care about your community. You're showing that you're doing outreach, that you're active in your community, which will connect with your members in the end. So, absolutely. Okay. What about you, Jeff? What do you say? I have to fully agree with Kenzie. It's it's great content that you can put up on your on your social media. The one thing I would warn against is focusing too much on yourself. I would focus on what you did so that it doesn't become self serving. Because people will sniff that out. Okay. What about you, Ken? 
Well, being originally from Chicago, I would say if you were a client of mine and didn't post things that you were doing in the community and sponsorships that you were doing, I think that I would mildly verbally abuse you. Uh, <laughs> that, that Facebook particularly, as the other folks said, is, is perfect for, for those types of posts. And if you're going to give things to charity, if you're going to support the community, you know, that is a great way to get the right uh, PR is, is by posting that in social, social media. Okay. So now that our audience knows that you're a live wire, I'm going to give you the next question. <laughs> so this is for you, Ken. Um, this, credit union, this is a, a question we got a couple of times from a few credit unions, and they said, how do you handle poor reviews or angry members? Or when you have great that question, yeah. That now they have a second part. They said, "What about members also that ask specific account questions on Facebook?" Well, the the account questions are easy. You just simply reply for everybody to to see that you know, please don't share uh, account information via Facebook. Or, or, or any other social media platform for that matter, please call 1-800-yada-yada-yada, whatever it is, whatever your phone number is, and we'll be more than happy to, to discuss account uh, information and your particular account. Uh, that, that's fairly easy. On reviews, yeah, the, the worst thing that, that any business could do is, is ignore a bad review. Um, and ironically, I was—I just got a new client about 30 million in assets. Uh, they only have one review. It's on Yelp, and it's a one out of five stars, and it's negative. And, and it's one of those deals where the individual is obviously way off base. But you know, even though the the member or prospective member, you know, simply put, may may be wrong or or misguided, uh, it's important to respond publicly to that particular poor review and say something to the effect of, I'm really sorry that you had a poor experience. We, we would love to talk about that. If you're willing to come into our, one of our branches, we'll have one of our branch managers, or if it's a smaller credit union, the CEO will speak to you about that particular incident. Now, nine times out of ten, what happens is that particular person who wrote that bad review doesn't say anything which is perfect because you, in essence, got the last word, coupled with the fact that all the other folks that would go to Yelp or Facebook and see that review will see your response and say, wow, you know, this business really does care about their business. It actually turns it around 180 degrees and turns it into a positive, you know, especially if you have you know, 15 reviews and 14 of them are four or five stars. Uh, the one out of ten incident um, is, you know, you, you may have somebody that really does have a legitimate gripe, um, and I would, if they want to uh, have that conversation on Yelp or Facebook, I would reiterate and suggest, you know, please call or come in. You know, maybe even say, you know what, we we have a special gift for you or something, you know, a keychain or a, a fuzzy uh, 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 rabbit's foot or whatever with a logo on it and we'll be happy to discuss it. Um, because you know, if it truly is a legitimate gripe, you, know, you, you want to know about it anyway and have that discussion. Fantastic. I'm going to jump back to you in one second, but I've got to give a question to Jeff before I bounce back to Kenzie. So, Jeff, are you ready for this one? We've got another really good question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's the question. Credine says, how would you address employees posting on their personal pages outside of official channels, things that may or may not be reflective of the credit union's values or in line with current social media strategy? How would you address that? Now, this is a really tricky uh, situation. I know many credit unions and many businesses have policies uh, within their employee handbook about this. Uh, but the reason it's tricky is because since it is on their personal account, you do – get into First amendment -y kind of areas. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so um, this is actually something I come up with uh, before. My wife is an HR professional, and I spoke with her about this, and there, there are specific things that you can and cannot do. Um, I would 
suggest if something like this were to happen, you, you look in greater detail depending on what your state and federal laws would, uh, would suggest. Excellent, excellent statement. Now let me um, ask you one more question, um, Jeff, before I jump over to Kenzie. Um, so this is a good question too, Jeff. The credit union says, so when posting pictures of your customers, should you ask for approval before posting them? Some people do not. My personal preference is when you post something online and they're taking the time out of their schedule to, you know, pose for a picture with you, it's always a good idea to ask their permission. I will even usually show them the picture before we, we post anything just to give, you know, get them to give the thumbs up. It protects you in a sense that you won't have somebody who's angry about you posting a bad photo of them. And at the same time, just it gets them more involved. Okay. Sounds good. Kenzie, are you ready for your question? Yes, ma'am. All right. This is a very good question, too. So here's what the credit union wants to know. They said, is there an app that can link all social media into one to easily see messages or make posts to various social media sites at once? Do you know about that? Yes, very good question. So most social media dashboards have an associated app that you can download to your iPad, to your smartphone, and you can pretty much track um, what you sent out, who is responding. You can retweet. You can even schedule messages um, in the app as well. So there are a ton out there. I just encourage you to do a little bit of research and find something that works for you. Okay. So now here's your next question, Kenzie. Don't go away. So remember, you mentioned Sprout Social, right? Yes. So apparently, we have a credit union that is kind of curious. Okay. They think, why do you prefer Sprout Social over other monitoring tools? Oh, good question. So like I said earlier, um, I did use Hootsuite for a little bit. Um, it just wasn't intuitive for me, and I just was poking around doing some research, and I came across Sprout Social. And when I start using, um, I started with the free basic um, monitoring package, and I liked it. It was intuitive. It was colorful because I love color. <laughs> um, and it just made sense to me. And the reporting is beautiful. And they're always available 24-7 um, with tech support. And they're um, easy to talk to. And they explain all the analytics and changes. So I just really like Sprout Social. That's just my preference. Okay. Fantastic. So now we're going to bounce back to Mr. Excitement. Ken, are you ready? <laughs> Take that as my new nickname. Yeah, that, that's it. You can't be Mr. Wonderful because someone else already has that name, so you're Mr. Excitement. So here's a question. <laughs> I'd rather be Mr. Excitement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a credit union that says they're interested in um, getting their employees more engaged with social media. So they said, what is your philosophy on having them engage in social media interaction during work hours because they're having a problem getting their employees to engage in their social media sites, period. So what's your philosophy on that? Well, I, I think that you, as I alluded to earlier, you, you need to keep, uh, you need to choose a few people that you know are going to be diligent. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned Desert Valleys is one of my clients. They they have one person, and they're they're a smaller credit union. I think about ten or eleven employees. They have they have one person who is who does a number of things and wears a number of hats, uh, but has designated times during the day, barring obviously a credit union emergency where she is supposed to be on the computer, supposed to be on Facebook. Um, posting what's what's approved and engaging with members, uh, depending upon the size of your credit union, yeah, I would I would pick two or three real diligent people that that you trust that that have been proven at your credit union, um, and, and by trust, you know, they could even have been there for for just a month, but have shown you know, some real prowess, and say, all right, you you two or three folks are responsible for engaging with our members uh, in social media. Uh, I would give them some guidelines of what to say, what not to say. You know, give, give, them, give them a pretty big bubble, but a bubble nonetheless. Uh, possibly even say if, if X happens, like a bad review, and it, they say something like this, uh, come see the CEO or, or come see the operations manager. Uh, but give them some parameters. 
give them some specific times during the day to, to post and engage and, and literally make it part of their job because the, the, the brand is, is really owned by, by the front lines anyway. Okay, now you have a question that's the exact flip side. Are you ready for this one? Oh, sure. Okay. So here's a credit union. They said, you know, um, our employees don't have access to social media during work hours unless they use their cell phones, and they are not allowed to use their cell phones. So here's a question. How can we encourage them to take social media home with them? Well, yeah, it's, that's, that's the, answer. the answer is a much larger question. It's, it's not even a social media question. It's a culture question. Um, you know, it's, okay, why, why are they not allowed to use their cell phones? Why, why are they not allowed to have access to social media during the day? Uh, if it's because of you know, the, where the credit union is located or if it's in a secure area or, or something like that, then that's one thing. Um, you know, if it's just simply a, a culture of you know, we, we only trust so much and we, we don't want um, our employees to, to have that type of access, then, then that's a culture question. You know, we really need to ask is, is, that, is that hindering us in, in our growth um, because we, we haven't truly engaged our employees. As, as I said before, you know, our first, or, or not today, but in many other sessions, our, our first member to market to are our employees. So, so we need to get them involved in the process. Um, you know, if, they're, if they're not posting via social media uh, in their, on their personal page, for instance, positive things about the place they work, um, you know, we've got to ask ourselves why. Um, I'll even go back, and, and I'll try to make this a short answer, but it's very, very relevant. You know, I'll go back to one of the earlier questions of uh, what happens if somebody posts something negative about the credit union uh, on social media. What do we do? I think you know, from, you know, Jeff answered perfectly from a legal HR standpoint, but from a culture team building standpoint, one of the first things that I would ask is simply why. You know, why are they not involved? Why, why are they posting something negative? You know, case in point, in, in my book I mention an institution who, who fired somebody, gave that person a severance eventually, and that in, individual ended up burning their, their uh, work shirt on YouTube and posting it. And, and that particular institution talked about, well, what are we going to do about it legally? Are we going to, to ask for that severance money back? Yeah, the first question is really, well, why are, is somebody doing or not doing something? Uh, what is it that we're doing as a culture to, to make somebody that angry or that apathetic <laughs> to not want to do that? Because it, it, it closing in this long answer, if people really enjoy where they work and have pride where they work, yeah, there's not much prodding that you need to do in order for them to talk positively about your institution, whether it be on social media or word of mouth to friends. Wow. That's a lot. That was a very interesting, too. I'm going to pop over. Yeah, that'll to teach you to ask me questions. <laughs> I'm going to jump over to Jeff. Jeff, are you ready? You think you can follow that one? <laughs> it's going to be tough, but I'll try. <laughs> well, this is a good one um, because we're taking for granted that everyone in our audience knows these different social network um, tools. So the credit union wants you to explain to them what is LinkedIn. All right, so LinkedIn is, the, the best way you can describe it, is kind of like a virtual resume for the average user. Uh, so you'll be on LinkedIn, you'll put in your work experience, some examples of your, your portfolio, stuff like that. And many people have used it in the past uh, to, for job searches and similar things. Along with uh, the, the basic resume stuff, you also are able to connect with other users who can then go to, uh, in a sense, say, yes, I verify that this person is good at this skill. So it's, it's a networking and job searching site. But since then, it's also kind of evolved for many businesses as a way of putting out more high-minded pieces. You, you can put out 
many things that would be considered too businessy or um, too professional for Facebook or Twitter because those are more more day-to-day -day usage, whereas LinkedIn is kind of like a businessy Facebook. Uh, many more you know, CEOs, higher-ups frequent that in a business sense. But I guess that's probably the best way to put it in a long-winded way, um, a businessy Facebook. It is. That sounds good to me. Educational. So now here's another question, um, Jeff, that Credit Union said. They want to know how can they – what are some ways – that they can solicit new followers? The, the best way is to make great content that your current followers want to share. That's probably the easiest way. Um, another great way is to do stuff outside of social media that links back to your, your social media account. So, for example, if you are hosting an event, have a poster up there that says, you know, hey, Tweet about this event and make sure to tag us at, and for example, the, the association is at PCUA. So it's like, hey, uh, follow us on at PCUA and tweet us about how you like this event. So that's one way of looking outside of social media to solicit newer, newer followers. Another way is on your website or blog saying, you know, follow us on social media to get the newest updates. So aside for creating great content, looking outside of social media is a really great way of finding new people. Awesome. Fantastic. So now we're going to bounce over to Kenzie. All right. Kenzie, you ready? Yes. This is a very good question, too, that uh, credit unions has. They said, I noticed that some credit unions use Instagram. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend posting on Instagram? And if so, how often? I do recommend posting on Instagram. Instagram is... Oh, it's heaven, um, at least to me anyway. I'm a visual person, and my sneaky suspicion, if you're trying to get um, members between the ages of, I don't know, 20 to 35, they're visual people too. So Instagram is probably where they are um, currently. Um, as far as frequency of posting, I would say test and see. Um, it's going to be different for every credit union, every organization. Um, you're just going to have to see what works for your audience. Um, but to start off, I would do between two to three postings and then see how um, your engagement is and track um, participation and things like that, and then you can go from there and determine how often you should post. Awesome. So here's another question, okay. Kenzie. Yes. So, and I'm going to add a little piece to this question. Wait a minute. Just, <laughs> I know. just because I want to know. <laughs> so the credit union said, what do you think about offering videos on YouTube? Okay. So I want to know, is there another venue besides YouTube that mm -hmm. can do the same thing? Okay. So I think video is from the fast facts. Um, YouTube, um, we learned that YouTube is the second largest search engine right now. Um, and then from research that I've um, seen, they're saying that you, uh, videos are going to take over. There will be no more text. It will only be video. So we're in that digital age right now. We're moving towards that. Um, so I would say, yes, engage on YouTube. Um, make sure that um, your videos are engaging. It's something that your audience will, 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 would learn from. Um, make sure they're short. You tag them. They have good descriptions and things like that so that people can find them easily. Um, as far as the other venue, um, Catherine, besides YouTube, there's Vimeo, there's Vivo. I mean, there's multiple, multiple video platforms out there, but YouTube is the largest. Okay, sounds good. Fantastic. I've learned something. Maybe I'll use it. <laughs> you never know. So I'm going to give the entire, our entire speakers an opportunity to answer one last question before we go. Um, Here's a question for all of the speakers. So the credit union says that when you post events on Facebook, do you think it's okay to post members-only events? And if hmm. so, how do you handle that if you don't want to invite everyone? Do you think that's okay? Let's go to um, Jeff first. What do you say, Jeff? That's a really good question. I think it's okay. You just have to be prepared for the possibility that someone who isn't necessarily a member uh, will try to try to, to join the event. Uh, so it's definitely possible, especially because you can set the privacy of an event. 
I do think that there are better venues, though, for member-only events. Uh, we use Cvent here at the association. Uh, I would suggest that Facebook events are more for events that are open to everybody. Okay. What do you say, Ken? You know, I, I do member-only events all the time for the Police Officers Credit Union Association. Uh, I don't have a problem with it at all. There's well, whether it's my association, or I should say our association, or your credit union, or anything that you would be a member of, um, there's a value from a brand standpoint of being a member. Um, you know, case in point, you know, we're, we're having a, a member-only event in October and had a credit union that, that wanted to participate, and I said, great, all you need to do is become a member, and this is, and this is how you become one. Um, so I see no problem with it at all. What do you say, Kenzie? I think I agree, I agree with Jeff more so. I think there's better venues for that. When you, uh, when you do member-only events, you do stand a chance of having some blowback. Even if you have privacy settings in place, um, that, that information can always leak. People can screenshot, they can snip and send it around. Um, so I would just be cautious. I would just err on the side of caution when using those type of tools. Sounds good to me. You know, we've had a wonderful, we have more questions, but we're going to make sure that all of our questions are answered. When we post the video in three weeks, you will be able to access all of the questions and the answers that we had. We'd like to give a special thank you to our interns. We had some fantastic interns this year, Amia, Stephanie, Chris, you heard from Chris, and we have Cece sitting over here kind of quiet next to Kenzie. Cece gave me a joke that I didn't use. But I'm going to use it now. Cece asked the question and she said, how do hummingbirds, why do hummingbirds hum? I don't know. And the reason is because they don't know the words. So on that note, we're going to invite you next month to our <laughs> webinar on high impact community partnerships. That's September 21st. Please join us. So thank you so much. We're going to keep the console open so you can keep doing the quiz. Thank you to our speakers to Jeff, to Kenzie, and to Ken, and of course we already thank Chris. We thank Franz, who's our behind the scenes guy, and Lauren, who is our host. My name is Katherine Baxter. I've been your moderator for today's event. What we'd like to do is to ask you to have a wonderful afternoon and a great week. <laughs>